We've been operating for five years. Um, it was an agreement signed between the provincial government of Nova Scotia and Northern Pulp and four community groups, the Ecology Action Centre, Mooseland and Area Association, Eastern Shore Forest Watch and the Nova Scotia Woodlot Owners and Operators Association. And Otter Ponds is a division of the Woodlot Owners Association. The idea of Otter Ponds is to have a working woodlot where we harvest wood but we maintain the Acadian forest. A big part of the project as well is education for woodlot owners and kids and small contractors, pretty much anybody who's interested in forestry. Today we were building this bridge and making a video so that people who have that same situation on their woodlot would be able to have a resource to learn about how to accomplish what we did today. What we have is a core area of the Otter Ponds Demonstration Forest has basically had no harvesting done since the early 1940s. Uh, what was existing here when the project began is forest that was recovered from heavy cutting of the past and a lot of the attributes of the Acadian forest were evident in, in the area and rather than have it managed on basis of even aged forestry we wanted to apply uneven aged management techniques to it so as to be able to demonstrate uh, the viability of a lighter footprint a lighter touch to harvesting on this woodland in Nova Scotia. We also wanted to be able to show uh, an example of a working woodlot that didn't have industrial forestry methods applied to it. We wanted to be able to demonstrate that timber production and forest harvesting is not incompatible with preserving other forest values like wildlife habitat, water quality, aesthetic purposes, and cultural values. A big part of the project in the last five years has been building infrastructure to give us access to the, to the land so that we can do harvests. So we've been building roads and bridges. This was an interesting place because it's an intermittent stream. So half the year there, it's dry, but half the year it's very wet and quite wide as well. So we were interested in how we could cross it without disturbing the area too much. First we started just removing uh, organic matter like dead wood that was going to be where the foundations of our sills were going to be on either side. We brought in logs that would be back from the sill on either side of the bank. And in between each log, there was a culvert, six inch culvert, so that when the stream does become very wide, which it does occasionally a few times a year, that we wouldn't wash out the road on either side of the sills. So we laid about, I think, three or four on either side of the creek and then we covered all that with geotextile so that when we put the rock and the soil on top, it wouldn't all go through and, and clog up those culverts. So logs, culverts, then geotextile, then we brought in some stone and then some, just some soil with some stone on top to build up to match the end of the road to where the sills are. When the stone was in place on the first side of the bridge, we made a temporary bridge using the wood that would later become the risers. This was so that the tractor could get to the other side of the bridge to place stone and logs without disturbing the creek bed. We wanted to do it in the way that a woodlot owner might find himself in, that he has some family or friends who could help him out, but is looking to save money on machine costs and labor and so on. So what we have here is some volunteers that have come and volunteered their labor, and uh, rather than hire and float in an expensive excavator to do the ground moving work and so on, we've hired uh, what might be more typically found around a farm woodlot, 
which is a farm tractor that's not near so expensive, but it's quite adequate for our purpose and more perhaps uh, suitable or appropriate of what you'd find around the woodlot in a rural community. The temporary bridge is then removed. This makes room for the sill on the near side to be put in place. Uh, with the two sills there, you can begin to level them and make sure they're at right angles to the water course. So we laid the rock, then we brought in uh, the sills uh, and laid them and got them level. And then once the sills are there, you can start putting in the, the bridge, essentially. It went very quickly after that. I'm a volunteer with Otter Ponds. I've been volunteering for two or three years and been involved in a few of their projects. It's been great learning how to use the different tools that I've never experienced before. So I've, I've learned a lot about building, which is something I always wanted to do. Wade and Kate, they're very experienced in that area. And Wade has worked in those woods his whole life as his, his father and grandfather. And so learning from someone who is familiar with that land has been an amazing thing for me. So I think you'll see it's actually quite a simple structure to build. Um, we didn't need many tools. It's, it's a lot of just physical labor, moving timber, lumber around, right. clearing the area. A lot of it is just safety, communicating with each other, keeping hands out of the way of wood that's rolling around, uh, wearing our hard hats, but otherwise it was hand tools, a chainsaw, and just people willing to work. Once the sills were level, the risers were placed on top. Uh, we evenly spaced them and then attached them with angle iron and lag bolts. Another important aspect of the infrastructure that we build here at Otter Ponds is that it lasts a long time. This bridge we hope will last 50 years if we maintain it properly. This is important to us because of the type of harvesting we do here, uneven age management, which means we go in to the woods regularly every few years to do harvests rather than just one time to cut everything and take it all out every 60 years. The last thing to finish the bridge and keep it in good condition will be to put tread planks on the top of the decking. Uh, these planks, they take all the wear and tear of vehicle traffic and they're easy and inexpensive to replace. Thank <laughs> you.